I was five years old and my granddad bought a little bitty motorcycle for my brother and I to share. And uh, from that point on, all I ever thought about was when the next time I could ride a motorcycle. Some of the earlier memories that I've got are from jumping on the back of a motorcycle with my dad and riding out to uh, the air show in Oshkosh and checking out old airplanes and hanging out with old motorcycles and just being around machinery all the time. I think a mile on a motorcycle can solve a lot of problems. It's as close as you can be to being a superhero or flying. And I've jumped out of a plane before and that was just scary as shit. Riding a motorcycle, you have a level of control and you can feel what you're doing and, and you're looking at the pavement going by at 80 miles an hour and you're in control of whether you hit that pavement or not. <laughs> you're in control of where you point the machine and, and how it reacts. Your job is not a safe place. Your, your house is not a safe place. You can't control what's going to happen in any of those. You always think you can, but you can't. You get on a motorcycle, you feel like you can control what you're doing and where you're going. Spending two hours droning down a straight section of highway in West Texas is a zen that you can't get at the yoga studio and you can't get at the gym and you can't get sitting at your cube at the office and it's not something that I can explain to you. But I definitely recommend that you find out for yourself. I got into the corporate world and, and did the go to job, sit in a cube, make the money. Uh, <laughs> um, and, and I don't know, one day it just occurred to me that I, that I had to do something that I was still obsessed with. And then I got fired from my job and um, it was this, this, this idea I'd already said, you know, get your shit together because we're going to do this and we're going to figure this out. And we had a name. We had a name. Yeah we had a, yeah, we had a business name. And a garage full of broken motorcycles. Right. In someone's backyard. And moved to Austin and just get to it, no plan. And started just figuring it out with no money in the bank and no real idea how yeah. it was going to go. And just enough money, just enough money to uh, pay, pay the, the first, first month's month. rent was what we had. And signed the lease going, okay, we've got four weeks to figure out how to pay the next month's rent. Motorcycles are what I love to do and now's the time to do it. The definition of what we choose to do with the bikes that we're trying to build for other people is inspire them to get more out of their bike and enjoy more and, and frankly just to like to look at the machine uh, more than they would otherwise. And that application is different with almost every machine. There's some, there's some basic parameters of what you need to, to, to put in there, but the truth is it's different with everything that comes in the door. So there's no definitive revival cycle because, you know, we, if we defined it and put it in a box, well then it's no more fun. It's a custom bike. It's a bike that a customer wants. It's whatever the customer wants. And what we try to stay um, close with and true to is blending you know the unique aspects of a vintage bike but also making that updated so that it works and you don't have to fight with it every day and it has electronic ignition and has modern niceties that actually allow it to be a usable machine so that you could have it as a daily rider but still have the the um, aesthetic factors of a vintage bike The overarching goal, undoubtedly, for the whole thing is that, is that we please the customers enough that they want to pay a decent wage that allows us to continue to do cool stuff that pushes the envelope of, of mechanical design and, and creative art, artistic endeavors that we can stay here and do this. That's it. The only goal is not to conquer the world and, and gain any level of notoriety or win any shows or do anything like that. It's just to make this profitable enough so that we can continue to build cool stuff and learn every time we do it. If you're quick on your feet and you're creative and you've got something to offer, don't worry about it. Go do what you want to do. You'll figure it out when you get back and you won't regret it because what you learn in that process is so much more valuable than another six months in the cube farm. It just is.